Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the OC Show. This is episode nine of season three. I'm here with Tim. My name's Peter. First things first, let's talk about the live Q&A. Yeah, so uh, we are back now in Taipei uh, after a little round trip in uh, Europe. Well, you weren't there, but I was there. <laughs> so I went to Europe and the US, and now I'm back. So next week we'll be back live with Truthman and uh, some hopefully some interesting guests. We'll see what we come along. And it will be on Tuesday, August 2nd at 9 p.m. Eastern time in the US or Wednesday morning if you're on the same time zone than me. All right, cool. So the first topic, as usual, is the online competitions at OC Esports, Rookie Rumbles. Yeah, so the Rookie Rumble is almost finished. Well, both of them are almost finished. Uh, it's about three days left. Right now we have uh, Rico and Itabella OC, both from Indonesia, in the lead, followed by uh, Toby158 from Germany. So that's for the Rookie Rumble on Intel CPUs. And if you are using AMD, there's a uh, Mikul TU from the UK and MC Van Long from the USA, uh, as well as Assassin Arca from uh, India that are in the lead. Uh, so if you guys uh, have AMD CPUs, you might want to check that out because there's still some DDR4 kits to win. So, yeah. I would totally go for it <laughs> if I was a rookie. <laughs> it's interesting to see so many new rookie overclockers from both Indonesia and India. Yeah. Looks like the um, scene is really booming over there. Maybe the efforts of local overclockers organizing events are paying off. Mm -hmm. So about the novice nimble, is overclock.net again in the lead? No, no, no. Cockatland is back. Uh, well, it's back by one point. <laughs> 223 points for Cockatland. So the French team followed by overclock.net, 222. And we have a new team kind of uh, coming into the top rankings here, which is the Reddit uh, slash R slash overclocking with 158 points. So they still have a bit of uh, road to make, but I think the, the Reddit team is pretty active. Thanks for, for Bildzoid to be uh, being moderator and uh, giving some uh, punch to this thing. So I like it. For people who have already uh, transgressed from the novice and the rookie leagues, there's a very interesting new competition organized by the CCTF, which is the Community Competition Task Force. All right. um, zero plus zero is Matt from Australia, put together a nice low clock, cheap ass chips uh, competition. Um, the it, it actually the, the name means as cheap as chips, not it's a cheap as chips. Oh. Just to make and sure you chips not like the fries. It is like the fries. Well, it's it as, as <laughs> cheap as <laughs> chips. Okay. Anyway, the cards they use is the GT710, which can be picked up below $50. There's already a couple of uh, overclocking guides on the internet. Uh, New Life from Australia provided a lot of the overclocking and volt voltage modification guides. And he's currently leading with 150 points out of the total of 150 points. So that's, uh, that's pretty good. In second place, we have Max Beach from uh, Australia as well. And then in third place, Lumi from Finland. The benchmarks are Kadzilla, 3 Mark 01, and GPU Pi. Oh, that's a nice selection of benchmarks. Yeah. A little bit uh, half retro, half new. I guess some guys will appreciate to see 3D Mago 1 in there. Yeah, if you want to, you know, enjoy a little bit of very cheap overclocking fun, this is uh, this is the the way to go. Asus also provided a GTX 960 graphics card for lucky draw. So all you need to do is modify your graphics card and then submit sub the score, submit results, and then you have a chance to win this uh, this graphics card. Hey, maybe I should I should make a submission. <laughs> <laughs> I have like four of them. <laughs> The biggest competition at the moment is the Team Cup 2016, which is our annual overclocking competition for overclocking teams. Um, we've done, uh, for, we've organized this competition since 2012, mm -hmm. uh, and as per usual, there's a well, it's the classic platforms is now sort of changed into Warp Nine systems. They're in the lead with 953 points. Wow. And then Overclocker.net, uh, second place right now with only 593 points. So that gap between number one and number two That's is huge, very big. Yeah. Yeah. In uh, third place, we have Extreme Overdrive, OC team from Italy, uh, with 550 points 15, as well. Yeah, yeah. In total, there are five stages. Uh, the first four are uh, broken up from, uh, from latest generation hardware to uh, modern hardware to old hardware to vintage hardware. And then the very last stage is all about dogpiled. So the dogpile is basically make as many submissions as you can with the different kinds of hardwares, mm -hmm. and all the points are added up. So that is just spam the system in order <laughs> to get f only five points. You know, every every round or every every stage within within uh, within the round gets 50 points for the win, 
This one only five. So, the, the, so, the so we might see some changes in the hardware rankings that they show about as a consequence, is it those? Uh, yeah, the Team Cup is typically uh, very popular. There's uh, 56 teams currently um, participating and mm -hmm. 185 overclockers across those teams. Currently submitted uh, 1,760 odd results. So that's oh. pretty... Uh, that's pretty massive. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Very interesting. The Roto Pro is about to start again for the last round of the season. So each season is made of three rounds, um, basically leaving the last quarter up for live competitions if there are some to be. Um, for the World Championship. Uh, the World Championship, for example, yeah. Um, so the Roto Pro is uh, not just Pro C, it's also Division 1 to 7. And uh, I hear there might be a, a few changes there on the selection of benchmark, hardware, etc. How's that going to be? The hardware will be uh, pretty much the same as okay. in the, pre the, the two previous rounds. So you can use the same equipment throughout the entire season. The benchmarks every round switch up. So there will be, again, okay. five stages. Uh, depending on which division you're participating in, the benchmarks will be a little bit different. But as like the concept the, is the same. Yeah, Division 1 is Core i7, Division 2 is Core i5, Division 3 is Core i3, and then Division 4 is an AMD F FX processor, Division 5 is the AMD APUs, Division 6 is ARM, and then Division 7 is Legacy. And Legacy this time is an is a AM2 platform with a, a, Gena, a Gena Core, which is the very first phenom. Ooh, so some guys are going to see uh, price hikes on eBay again. Well, I have some I have some recollection of these Venom One processors, and uh, I have a shiver going down my spine. So <laughs> some some people will have some rough times in the coming uh, the coming two months. Oh, that's awesome. It's also the last round to determine who will be the division champion of this year. And currently in the lead, we have uh, Dan Cop in Pro C, and then Division One is Metal Racer from the USA. In Division 2, it's Mark0053, who qualified for the World Championship. Um, Strong Island is leading Division 3. Darky from India is leading Division 4. In Division 5, we find, we find uh, uh, Johan45. Yep. In Division 6, it's uh, Christian Krusic from Slovenia. And then in Division 7, it's Dominator. Ooh. I'm looking forward to see what the, the new Road to Pro season, uh, like a season, what is it, season two now? This is season two, yeah. Season two, round three is going to be like. So now I can switch to my next topic, yes. which was the World Tour coming back. And um, there's going to be um, some interesting developments here as we are staying in Asia, but extending Asia to Asia Pacific. Yeah. So it's no longer Southeast Asia, it's Asia Pacific. Ooh. Um, it's still in uh, in Indonesia, as we've planned yep. all, all along. It will be at uh, a big trade show in Yogyakarta. It's called Yogyakarta Comtech. Uh, we'll be organizing it together with the guys from Jagat Review and uh, Jagat OC. You know, B-Boy Jazz, Lucky Noob, um, uh, Hendra. Hendra Coldest yep. is his nickname. Yeah. So they have, a, they have a lot of experience in organizing overclocking events. They're fantastic overclockers themselves as well. Mm -hmm. And they'll be helping us out with doing the workshops, doing the World Series competition. It's the last ticket that you can, uh, that you can get, grab for the World Championship. Uh, the event itself lasts five days. It starts on September 3rd and ends on uh, on September 7th. 7th. Yeah. Yep. Uh, if you want to fly to Yogyakarta, I would recommend you to get your flight tickets as soon as possible. For those who are looking for hotels in, uh, in Yogyakarta, you'll find easily accommodation below 25 US dollars per night. So that is not a problem oh, whatsoever. That's very interesting. Yeah. I'm pretty sure some uh, maybe eventually Australian overclockers will be interested to flying over. Quite possibly, yeah. We'll get more details out in the coming weeks. We're, uh, we're finalizing the plans on the sp sponsorship and uh, the exact structures of the competition. Mm -hmm. As you know, each uh, each region uh, re requires a different approach. So, yep. yeah. Yogya Comtech, that rings a bell. Is that uh, the same place where there was AOCT a few years ago? That is correct. So AOCT uh, 2014 had the large final at this specific event. Oh yeah, right, with 100 plus overclockers. Yes. That was an impressive one. Oh, so the venue is actually perfect for that. Yep, it is. Excellent. So talking about events, there's been also uh, other events in the world organized by community members. Uh, in Spain, we saw uh, Centino X, uh, who's always very active at organizing uh, events. Um, so he actually extended his uh, event roadmap from doing uh, his usual events at the uh, Euskal uh, LAN parties. So they have like three, three LAN parties uh, in Spain. Those are actually very big LAN parties between 3,000 and 6,000 people, uh, like gamers attending already. And he added also now the Dream Hike in Valencia. So yeah. he basically did 
two events, the DreamHack and the USCAL Encounter in Bilbao, all those within two weeks. Wow. So that's uh, two ma major workshops in Spain. So I hope we'll actually see some uh, extreme overclockers or new faces in overclocking thanks to his eff efforts in mm -hmm. Spain. So um, other events that happened in the last uh, weeks, uh, last weekend was the um, the PA event, as they call it. So that was in Harrisburg. It was also called uh, the Summer 2016 OC Party and was organized by Fansol and Stepans. Mm -hmm. uh, so that event was actually uh, had 25 people that had pre-registered, 14 overclockers attended in the end, and there was a massive amount of LN2 sponsored by Corsair for that one. So awesome. Uh, I ended up going there. It was uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, a lot of fun, a lot of uh, freestyle benching. There was not any competition plan for that uh, that event. It was mostly bring your hardware, do what you want. Most of the people ended up uh, either going for the cheap ass competition or some were just uh, hunting their personal goals. Uh, a lot of um, people actually broke their personal best. So it was uh, it was nice to hear some some success shouting in some of the corners once in a while. Mm -hmm. And two of the participating the overclockers moved from apprentice, which is usually for dice and things like that, uh, to extreme. So um, that uh, shows how important it is to have that kind of event. Yeah, it's the same with, um, for example, the ROG camp that was held last year, organized mm. by Der Bauer in, uh, in Germany. I think there was one person who attended the PA event, um, Aero... Aero Tracks, yeah, correct. I so think he was at the ROGOC camp last he, year. He was there, and uh, so his uh, his family, or part of his family, is actually originating from that region where they mm. had that event. So he combined a family trip, a summer holiday, with uh, attendance to that event, and it was really cool. He was benching next to RT Surfers, mm. uh, which was also great to, to meet him at the event, and they, they, had, a, they had a great time together uh, exchanging their... The newly extreme knowledge about the uh, LN2 overclocking. So that was great. For extreme overclocking, the the live gatherings and the live events are the most important. You, you hear this story over and over again with the with the, mo the very established extreme overclockers. All of them have, most of them have learned it at uh, social gatherings. That's for that's for sure. I also saw that there was a uh, some kind of a new testing from overclocking TV. Uh, yeah, so um, I was uh, I was actually going to that event as I was flying back from a family trip to Europe. So I ended up driving down with uh, Truthman and Mark 0053 all the way down to that event from Canada. So that was a 13-hour drive. And um, we, what we had planned with uh, Truthman was not to go there to bench, but go there to basically set up a stream rig and see if we could find some volunteers to try out new uh, OC games, if you call it, or so new formats of uh, live competition for one versus one. Uh, the goal here is to try to figure out other ways to do live overclocking that is a bit different from what we do right now at the World Tour. Um, so instead of going for the highest score within 30 minutes, uh, we tried to see how else we could do it so it can be capturing for the audience watching it, easy to understand and also interesting for the overclockers doing it as well. So we, we tried a new format that we call the target attack one versus one or something like that's how we call it so far. And the idea is to basically beat the target within uh, sets of five minutes. And uh, the, um, the interesting part is that we give three lives to overclockers that participate in the game. Every time you hit the target like a, like a bow eye, so in that case you win a life. Or if you have three, that's your maximum, you just cap that three. But if you don't hit the target, you miss it. In that case, you lose a life. But if both of the candidates miss the target, in that case, only the, the furthest away loses the life. Mm, okay. um, if both of the clockers are also at the same, t hit the same distance from the target, they both lose a life. So oh. it's uh, kind of interesting and fun to do as well. Uh, we saw Mark on the first round completely uh, losing it. And on the second one, he actually uh, beat Stepanzi thanks to uh, hitting once the target. So that gave him the extra life to, to stay in the race. So we used Cinebench, and um, it actually that the whole testing showed us how important it was to uh, basically have benchmarks that are very short and very visual as well. So mm -hmm. we can see on the screen what's going on. We did a try at 3.30 uh, a.m., which was a, a terrible thing to do. Uh, with uh, Mark suggested the Geekbench single score uh, single core and uh, it was it was terrible it was <laughs> terrible it's just one minute 30 of pain and uh, just a, a progress bar going <laughs> up 
and uh, basically nothing to show, nothing to say, and even having Steponzi just blacking out for like a minute, uh, not not knowing what he was doing until he realized that he didn't start at the benchmark. Oh. So basically after that, we, we just stopped halfway and we decided those benchmarks are not made for life. <laughs> <laughs> what's, uh, what's interesting upcoming now for other events is uh, you can follow all this on HWX, by the way, just throwing it out there, look on the event schedule. There's an uh, there's an HWX event in Honduras in a, a town called San Pedro Sula at a yeah. university. Uh, this is o organized by Master Blitz OC and it's the first time that there's an HWX event in South America. It's really cool to see more activity coming in South America. Uh, we did the World Tour in Brazil at mm. the beginning of the year. We know that the South, South Americans are super passionate about everything they do, including overclocking. Um, so uh, after um, after that, what else is on the overclocking agenda? Yes, the event in Indonesia, the world yep. tour in Asia Pacific. And then near the end of the year in November, we might be going to Australia for some small thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then for sure, first weekend of December will be the world championship with another to be announced event, which is also what extreme overclocking. That's a lot of to be announced stuff. Yeah. I'm looking forward. <laughs> what is not to be announced is uh, the live Q&A or the live episode of the OC show next Tuesday. That's going to be August 2nd, 9 p.m. Easter time. We're going to talk about probably the expensive new Titan X that has been launched and all the drama that unveiled with oh. it. If you have any takes on that, just join the show and also probably mentioning uh, the cool, uh, like you mentioned, the Volt Mod H for the 7, um, 710 GT. I'd love, to, I think I saw Boltzoid do also the cheap yes. ass competitions. I yes. hope he can join in again. And He's an expert in all that kind of drawings yeah. and paint things. I think people loved it last time to have him on the show. Yeah, it's, he, he, he could be our residing technical expert for VMODs. He should, <laughs> yeah, he seems to be very knowledgeable. So get him on board again. Yep. All right. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching and tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this episode, just share it on your Facebook wall. Hey.